I've been in this uh, mode of listening to all your old stuff online. I, I just been starting listening and listening. Oh, dude, you have some of the best. Like you get jacked up about a topic that, and you just go off. It jacks me up so much, man. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. I'm telling you what, I always do that kind of, I, I always look for like, where can I get excited? Who can fire me up? Who can put into my head stuff that can help me grow and help me, you know, help my attitude, right? We always talk about, you got to protect your attitude. Like you said, Mark, you can't afford to have a negative thought in your head you know you can't afford the luxury of having and just listening to all the different things that you do and i've got tons of links guys if you want to i've got some treasured market set a classic market set and our recruiting web page so if you want to hear stuff i've been listening to man anyway i got 831 so let's get rocking man i i want to introduce a good friend of mine we've become really good friends um over the years he's been with us and i've had just the pleasure of spending one-on-one -on -one time with him i'm flying to dallas texas just so i could get some of Mark's time and man I tell you what I've profited so greatly from this man and some of y'all know my story about breakthrough last year I meaning two what it did for my or organization and many of you are the fruits of that association with Mark many of you on this call just crazy when I think about it much of our explosion in 2023 was because what Mark I've learned from Mark and him getting into my head and beyond just his expertise in building massive businesses like we're talking this guy's the, <clears throat> the lead in networking organizations. He is up there, man. To, in my opinion, he's up there with the Bill Brits of the world. And I came up through the Ambiz and Bill Brits, one of the granddaddies of Mark. And I put Mark a set up there right with him. And so I revere his knowledge and what he's been able to accomplish. And so I can't be more excited to have him on this call to share with you guys. Again, like I said, beyond his acumen and ex expertise on building organizations, what I love about Mark is his mindset and attitude, the way that he can teach to get your minds right, to get you thinking right. I think if we fix and mold your thinking to how winner think, then your results are going to follow in line with how you think. This is six inches between your brains. I and mean, this is what I love Mark for this kind of stuff. So I want him to real. I want you guys to open your minds and hearts and hey, if he steps on toes, remember you brung your toes in here because you want to grow. So we're going to take the gloves off and we're just going to hit you. He's going to hit you straight between the eyes. And uh, Mark, man, here's my team, bro. This is with brother. So I'm turning them over to you. Thank you, man. You know how much I honor and respect <clears throat> because as a leader, allowing people to pour into your team is no joke. So I really uh, appreciate that. So I got to start after listening now. It's by telling you, I started my entrepreneurial journey in 1988. In 1988, I was living in a one room apartment, which is different than a one bedroom apartment because a one bedroom apartment has a bedroom and another room. I was in what you call an efficiency where everything was in the same room. The kitchen, the bedroom, the toilet, it was all in the same room. And that's all I could afford. That was the only way I could live on my own and not have a roommate. And my car, I had a, a used car and it had a, you know, of course I had an insurance policy, but I negotiated a really low rate with a really high deductible. And that was great because I'd never had an accident. Then that year I had someone plow into me on a passenger side and I couldn't afford the $500 deduct. So for a year and a half, I drove around with a car that looked like it was in a demolition derby, which <clears throat> might sound funny, but I was single at the time. Imagine going on a date and telling your date that she has to jump through the window like it's the Batmobile if you want to go in my car. It just, I look back at it and go, man, I was a train wreck. Then I didn't want to go to a seminar, but I ended up going to a seminar. I won't bore you with it, but I didn't think I needed it. That's the great thing because we don't know what we don't know. That's an expression I didn't learn growing up. I love my mom and dad. They didn't teach me that. My teachers didn't teach me that. No one taught me that. And then I met a guy who was making $100,000 month. And this again was in 1980. That's a lot of money now. It was an absurd amount of money then. And he said, you don't know what you don't know. So what you don't know could fill the Grand Canyon. So I'll tell you what you don't know. And just having the knowledge, we've all heard knowledge is power, which in my opinion is bullshit. Knowledge is irrelevant if you don't 
use it. So he goes, I'm going to give you the information, but if you're willing to take action with it, then the whole game can change. And he also said, look, by the way, when I met this guy, he's making 100000 a month, which definitely impressed me. In the Bible, it says, by the future should know them. The guy had good fruit. There was no doubt. He was clearly really making what he said he was making. But a year and a half later, he was making a million dollars a month. Imagine making a million dollars a month in 1988. It was ridiculous. And when I stopped working with him a decade later, he was making five million dollars a month, four to five million dollars a month. So again, this guy definitely became my financial mentor without any question whatsoever. And a lot, he taught, I'm going to share with you a few things. It's a brand new year. So a lot of people have hit the reboot button. So we're ready to change things. But I got news for you. I went to the, my, my wife, I digress for a second. So my wife is a beautiful woman. She's 40 years old. She's a model. She has never had to work out in her whole life. She's just that genetically blessed. She never works out, which makes me want to strangle her because I go to the gym day in, day out. I'm very purposeful and intentional about staying in shape. I'm 63 years old. I have pretty good shape for a guy my age. And I work on it. And she doesn't really work on it, which is frustrating. When we got to the gym, she was like, oh my gosh, it's so crowded. And I paused for a second and made me realize it's like, yeah, these are all the people who made a New Year's resolution. Over a hundred million Americans just went on a diet. You want to bet how many will still be in the gym by February 1st? The sad answer is virtually none of them. The people who came in the beginning of January, they're going to be gone. So my point is don't allow this to be just another year where we set a, a, a resolution or we make a goal, but we don't achieve it. Because setting a goal is worthless if you don't achieve your goal. And getting off to a good start is obviously really important. So part of you are going to get off to a good start, which is great. That's emotionally, it feels great. And it gives you a better possibility of following through. But here's the other thing. Most of you are not going to get off to the kind of start you want. So what's your plan? Or are you going to stay with it when you don't get off to a good start? Because again, I'm going to be vulnerable for a minute. I'm an Alabama football fan. We just lost in the semifinals of the national championship. And we played really good until the last two minutes of the game. And then we played like shit. It's a 60 minute game. It doesn't matter how well you play for fifth, eight minutes if you don't play all 60 minutes. And it's the same thing in business. It's like, you know what? We never know what day is going to be the day we sell a massive annuity. We never know what day is going to be the day we meet somebody at a Starbucks in line, have a chat with them, end up bringing them to a hot spot, and they turn into Andy Albright. Again, like we just don't know. So unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we've got to be on all the time. So it's like, again, like if you're really committed this year, if at this time, early January, you feel committed to your goal, then I just want you to ask yourself, or maybe we'll examine what does it take to be really committed? So here's a story. I love analogies and I love to study successful people from any walk of life. But particularly, I love to study people in Hollywood and I love to study people who play sports because I think when I'm doing my teaching, a lot of us can relate to an athlete. We watch them. A lot of us can relate to uh, someone in Hollywood because we watch them. I was watching a lot of stuff on Quentin Tarantino recently and on James Cameron on these different directors. And what's interesting, I'm going to share this with you. I just saw this. So Tarantino said, I was in a phase in my life. A lot of you guys follow him at all. He used to work in a video store and he worked in a video store. And he said, what's well, interesting for a while that being in a video store scratched my creative inch itch enough that it was enough. But I was asleep. That's what he literally said. I was asleep during that period. I made believe I was awake, but the truth was I was asleep. And here's a very important thing he said. I looked around at my peer group and with every one of my peer group, I was doing better than them. I was more ambitious than them. So I thought I was doing okay. But the truth was when I really looked at it, my peer group wasn't doing anything. So he, he used the analogy of imagine you're in a hundred yard race and you're running against people that are slower than you. They're definitely not as 
good as you. So you win the race every day and then walk around like you're Roger Bannister or Jesse Owens or whoever, some great Olympic gold medal winner. But the truth is, who are you running against? So he said, I'm going to move to Hollywood and my peer group, I'm going to choose to be the weakest link I could possibly, I'm going to find a chain and I'm going to be the weakest link. And I'm going to be around people that run so much faster than me that I know in the beginning, I'm going to lose every single race. But at the end of a year, I'm going to be so much faster than I was coming in last place when I used to come in first place. So that's just something to be aware of. Like right here in the Alliance, some of you guys look at the leaderboard. And if you're not striving to be on the leaderboard, you should strive to be on the leaderboard. But again, just because you're on the leaderboard doesn't mean, you, what if you, instead of looking at the top leaders in the Alliance, what if you look at the top people selling insurance in America? I bet you that's a different leaderboard. I bet you the number one person here may not be the number one person in America. So it's who are we hanging out with? What is the standard we're holding ourselves to? So again, it's an exciting time. And like Alex said, I'm not at all trying to be a jackass tonight. I'm just saying to get to where we want to get to, you got to be committed. So let me go back to Hollywood. So James Cameron, do you know James Cameron? He did Terminator. He did the Titanic. He did Avatar. Super ridiculously wealthy, successful guy. So he said, okay, so here's what people People always ask me, what do I do if I want to be a director? He said, the first thing you need to do is you need to make a film, something. Get your brother-in-law and your sister and film them and make a move, like a ridiculous home movie. Make a movie, that's step number one. Any goofball can do number one. Number two, quit your job and become a full-time movie person. Whoa, 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 hold on there. I've never been to movie school before. I don't know. And I'm sure most of you guys have heard this. It's in the book, Think and Grow Rich. And I forget who it was. I don't know if it was Alexander the Great, but there was years and years and years ago. Imagine being around thousands of years ago. A lot of you guys are like me. I jump on a plane to fly to Australia or fly to Asia all the time. So within 16 hours, you're in a completely different part of the world. Imagine back in the day, if you wanted to go from this part of the world to Australia, it would take three months on a boat, like a, a ridiculous long period of time. So imagine you're in the army, you and your leader, you go on a boat and you finally get to where you're supposed to be to after a month, two months on a boat. And when you pull up, you realize that your enemy outnumbers you 10 to one and they have vastly superior weapons. So this army leader, and again, I think it was Alexander the Great, but I apologize if I'm wrong. The story though, I'm sure. He turns to his men who want to leave like any logical person would. And he says, burn the boat. Either we win or we perish. Now that is being all in. You know that expression from poker, right? All in. That's like where you push all your chips forward and if you lose, you're out, you're done, it's over. And most people don't go all in. Most people want to hedge their bets. Most people want to have a safety net. Imagine doing a Cirque du Soleil show with no safety net. I mean, it's one thing if there's a net there. If there's no net there and you're flying through the air and you're relying on somebody else to catch you, oh my gosh, that's serious stuff. So again, I don't know if you know the definition of an entrepreneur, which I know we don't own the Alliance, but we're all independent contractors. So we're all entrepreneurs, really. And the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who takes unusually high risk. So I know some of you guys are really new. Some of you have been around for a while. So the questions I'd ask you is what's your, how many leads are you getting every week? Are you on a GPR? Are you getting leads on a regular basis? Or are you playing it safe? Because here's the thing you gotta understand, and I know Alex has probably told you this a hundred times. There's nobody, I can, I've been here two years. I've never met anyone who buys leads and loses money. Nobody. As a matter of fact, they make eight to one, 10 to one, 12 to one. So people like Megan Wood, her selling like it's an Olympic sport, the way that she makes the kind of money she does is she buys more leads than everybody else. Therefore, she does more appointments than everybody else. Now, you may not have the closing skills of a Megan Wood. You may not understand insurance and investments the way Megan Wood does, but can, if you were to do the same amount of leads, I bet you you do, even if you're terrible, you do 20% of what she does. And, and if you're good, you do 50% of what she does. But again, a lot of people aren't doing it because they're not all in. Be 
because they're not willing to quit your job. And let me go back to uh, what's his face, the director I told you about, Cameron. He goes, here's what you gotta look at. If you're not willing to quit your job and go full time, then there are thousands of other people who are willing to do that. So how are you gonna genuinely compete? How are you gonna get a studio or a writer or somebody to choose you to direct their movie when you're not even doing it full time? You can't seriously think you're gonna compete against the best people in the world. So again, I understand it. And again, I am a Nick Saban fan. I just flared that even though we lost. One of my favorite quotes of his is high achievers don't like average people and average people don't like high achievers. And I believe that's true because how many have ever seen the movie, The Devil Wears the Prada? Have you ever seen that movie? If you haven't seen it, go. It's a fun, entertaining movie. And there's this young lady who ends up getting a job being an assistant for a woman in the movie called Miranda Priestly, who's based on the real woman who ran Cosmopolitan magazine for a million years. And she's the devil who wears Prada. And she is tough. I mean, demanding, like tougher and more demanding than any boss you'd ever imagine. And in the movie, this young girl in the beginning is like, well, this is air. She's mean, like she's this, she's that. But as the movie goes on, she realizes that this lady is at the top of the top of her game. And if you want to be around her, you can't put in an average effort. So you can quit and there'll be eight people to replace you tomorrow. But if you really want to go. So as I watch this movie, it's so funny because I talk to a, I love talking to people, getting their input. And so many people watched the movie and when they watched it, they were like, oh yeah. Like I felt bad for Anne Hathaway who played the assistant, like, oh my God. And I was like, really? I thought it was awesome. I thought she was a badass. I love, because my mentor was like Miranda Priestley. Are you kidding me? Like he wasn't coddling me. When I was sad and despondent, he didn't put his arm around me and go, don't worry, it's okay. He goes, Hey, that's cool. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe you need to get a job. Okay. And again, I know some of you are, ooh, that's harsh. Maybe it was, but for me, it made me pull my head out of my butt. Because here's the thing, feeling sorry for ourselves doesn't work. And Alex hit the nail on the head. If you would have met me 36 years ago when I started doing this, first of all, we wouldn't be on a Zoom right now. There's no way someone as successful as Alex Sabian would have that Marcus Seto get on and talk to anyone, nobody. Because if we think the way we always thought, we'll do the things we've always done and, and we'll always get the same things we always had. So I just got done telling you my state of the union. I lived in a crappy apartment. I couldn't even afford to fix my car because of $500. I lived from paycheck to paycheck. Oh my gosh, I was as bad as you could get. Then I went to a seminar and it made me change the way I think. On the Bible, it says over and over again, repent, repent. Repent doesn't mean apologize. Repent means change. Re Renew your mind. Change the way you think. Okay, I don't mean to preach, but Jesus, he came here to get us to change the way we think. So my mentor, in a completely different way, got me to change the way I think. He turned me on to books like Think and Grow Rich. Certainly you've heard of that. Thoughts are things. That's a fact. So we can't afford the luxury of a negative thought. Again, in the Bible, it says if you have faith the size of mustard, you can move a mountain. You've heard that, right? But what people don't get out of that is that our brain, a human brain can only entertain one thought at a time in our conscious mind. Now our unconscious mind does 73 things at one time. If you can entertain more than one thought at a time, a conscious thought, then that's the definition of schizophrenia. So I hope you can entertain more than one thought at a time. So we can only think of one thing at a time. So here's got to, if you have like just an itty bitty amount of faith, a mustard seed, have you ever seen a mustard seed? It's as small as you can get. But if you have just this slight feeling of faith, then it's all faith because you're thinking about faith. What it doesn't say is if you have a mustard seed of doubt, you're dead because it's all doubt. So our actions are going to follow our thoughts. So right now, are you sitting here going, oh my gosh, people are broke. The economy is crashing. No one can afford insurance. Because Henry Ford, you've heard of him, right? This is also a thing we're rich. He started Ford Motor Cars, the first assembly line ever, one of the most brilliant business people of all time. He said, 
said, and this is because the only people in the workforce there were men. He said, the man who thinks he can and the man who thinks he can't are both right. So think about it. If you think no one can afford insurance, you're right. Tomorrow, Megan Wood, who doesn't believe that, will go out and sell more insurance in a day than some people will sell in three months because she thinks everybody can afford insurance. It's her mindset. It's the way she looks at things. So again, I would strongly say whatever you're doing, add to it if you're not already doing it. Doing what Alex just said, read book voraciously. You can't see behind me. I've got a library that is filled with books and I'm buying new books nonstop. I can't even keep up with all the reading I'm trying to do because imagine someone spent 30 years of his life or her life figuring out something and then they condense it to 200 pages and you and I can get all of their 30 years of hard knocks and, and pain and suffering and get it in 200 pages. My goodness, I cannot read enough books because again, learning is an ongoing nonstop. And here's the other thing. So I'm telling you all this stuff, right? I'm like, guess what? I've got a problem going on in my life right now that if any of you want to trade problems with me right now, I'll trade you right now straight up. It is one of the biggest problems I've had in my adult life. But as a human, I'm a human. It bothers. It's upsetting me. It's causing stress. It's doing this. It's doing that. So the point of this is years ago, I would have felt bad for myself. I would have been a victim. I would have been sad. I would have spent all day, every day focusing on this problem. And like many problems, if you make enough money and throw the money at the problem, it goes away. That's what I'm dealing with. So the situation is, I have trained myself that I, if I'm focusing on the problem, I'm not focusing on the solution. How can you, if we're talking about whose fault it is, why it happened, if it's fair or not, that's all focusing on the problem instead of focusing on what am I going to do to fix it. So again, there's this mindset deal. If it's, uh, what, I, you don't need to watch my videos. I, great, watch videos and audio. If you want to, that's great. But whatever you can do to get yourself in this mindset, and we were talking the other day about a book called Extreme Ownership, which was written by two Navy SEALs. And I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, and I'm going to forget the name of it. It's the one about Marcus, real life story. He's the one who was in Afghanistan, and they found a little kid, and they decided to let him go, even though he was make going. Anyway, yeah, so right. It, uh, it, unbelievable. And he and his troop ended up getting assaulted by, I think there were seven of them, and they got attacked by hundreds of guys. And if you want, watch that movie played by Mark Wahlberg and you see the unbelievable physical pain and emotional pain this guy was going through. But through it all, quitting was never an option. I remember at one part, he got shot up and his right arm got completely shot up and he just took his gun and put it in his left hand. You know what I mean? And just kept going. It was a cartoon and it wasn't really his physical human body. And a lot of that is training yourself. I got a chance to meet years ago, the guy who shot Osama bin Laden, another Navy SEAL named Rob. Gosh, I'm struggling tonight. His first name is Rob. Anyway, shot bin Laden, Rob O'Neill. And he was saying that when I met him, he's not a physically imposing guy. Like when I think of a Navy SEAL, I think of someone who's built like a statue, like the David statue. And I'm not saying he was in bad shape, but he wasn't someone who was physically intimidating. And he said, no, you don't understand. It's mental. Navy SEALs are so strong mentally, nothing can make them break. So again, I, I'm sharing all the stuff. What does this have to do with selling insurance? Everything. Because the attitude comes before the paycheck. That's what it's all about. And I know I'm hitting. So the question is, how committed are you to doing what you want to achieve this? Year? And again, you got to be real with yourself. I learned two things from a, a very important mentor in my life. Number one, you got to ask yourself tough questions. And number two, you got to respond honestly. And that's hard. Most people don't do that. Most people aren't even aware of the concept of trying to do that. So how committed are you really? So here's what happens a lot. Alex referred to the training we do called Breakthrough. And in Breakthrough, we have at some point, you write down what you really want. What's your top priority? What do you really want to achieve? And then we start talking about what your priorities are and your time priorities. And if you are not putting a significant amount of time into your number one priority, how is it going to happen? I love, you 
you know, people who read The Secret, they go, I'm just going to manifest it. Hold on. <sighs> I'm, I'm manifesting. Hold on. I'm manifesting success. And I'm try, trying to make fun. I guess I'm trying to make fun of people. But manifesting will not get as much as doing the actual work. I'm sorry. Like, work is not a bad four-letter word. There's no place in the world success comes before work except in a dictionary. You've got to do the work. So I go back to Alex, and I hope I can say this without doing anything to you. I have the deepest respect for Alex. So here's a guy who's made millions and millions of dollars. One of the most talented gentlemen I've ever had the pleasure of working with. But when he got to breakthrough, he just wasn't at that point putting in the effort necessary to get the results he knew that he could be getting. And for whatever Jedi logic he had in his head that was stopping him from taking the action, we were able to change the way he thought so it affected his action. And now there's nobody, and I don't res disrespect anyone else in the country, Company, when I say this, there's no one I know of taking more action than Alex. So now when you've got that much talent and that much action, it is just a matter of time until the massive results are coming in. So this, what we're doing is not an individual sport. Golf is an individual sport. Tiger Woods can be a zillionaire and break every record he wants by himself. Football is not an individual sport. It's a team sport. I don't care how good you throw the ball, if you're getting knocked flat on your back every time you touch the ball, you ain't going to be a great quarterback. So here, in order for you or me or Alex or anyone to build a team and have huge success and have a company like Integrity look at you and go, we want to buy your business. We want to make you a managing partner with Integrity. Imagine how incredible that would be. But in order for that to happen, you've got to have other people on your team. And not only have people on your team, we've got to get those people, a number of those people to be the best they could possibly possibly be. So it starts with you making a serious commitment. What does all in look like to you? And here's what I, I listen, I got, here's what I, I never teach something I don't do. Like it makes me angry when I see public speakers, success trainers who teach all these theories and in their own life, they couldn't do anything further from the truth. So I just got done myself doing an analysis and saying, okay, this is what I want. This is the action that needs to be taken. Am I willing to do what it takes to get what I want? And if I'm not, then the bottom line is I can manifest until my head falls off. It's not going to happen. So the first thing we do is commit to doing the work. Go through the numbers. This is insurance, like everything else, is a numbers game. The more people you talk to, the better off you're going to be. And that means when you're selling, and that means when you're recruiting. God has got a sense of humor. So you go out and you have this list of these 20 amazing prospects, and you talk to these 20 amazing prospects and nothing happens. Then you meet someone in line at the movies and maybe they got, like they're the most unphysically, but like you can't imagine they could have any success, but what's deep down inside of them, you have no idea. And because you talked to them online at the movies and said, you seem like a sharp person, maybe no one's ever said something like that to them before. They get involved and they go bonkers. Before Megan would join, I know I'm talking about Megan a lot tonight, she was a bartender. She wasn't some super incredible dynamics. She was a bartender and she came in and sells over a million dollars worth of insurance a year. So there's way more Megan Woods that are out there. But the question is, are we going through the numbers? Are we talking to them? And when we talk to them, every time you talk to them, are you a living example of how phenomenal this business is? Because the deal is, if we've got the deal, I would say that we've got other people say they've got the deal. They don't have the deal we have. But if we We've got the deal and we're trying to get other people to join us instead of other agents, then are you acting like we've got? Them? Are you truly acting in your mind? Are people bizarre, insane, and crazy if they join another organization? Other Because if you really believe that and you can express that to any degree, then you're going to have a lot larger group. But I know a lot of people are like, you know, I don't want to push too hard or I don't want people to think I'm weird or I don't want people to think I'm pushy. Okay, that's cool. But the bottom line is my message
mentor was pushy. My mentor was, have you ever read about Stephen Jobs? You talk about being weird. Stephen Jobs, when he was stressed out, would go into the men's room at Apple and stick his feet in the toilet and chill by putting his feet in the toilet. Now, if that isn't weird, I don't know what weird is. So people think you're weird. I don't care. People think I'm weird. People have been thinking I'm weird ever since I started doing business. I really don't care because none of those people are giving me money to pay my bills. So they can think whatever they think. What is Eleanor Roosevelt? If you've never studied Eleanor Roosevelt, the former first lady and her quote, she is amazing. And she said, I think great minds talk about ideas. Good minds talk about tactics and small minds talk about other people. You know what I mean? It's like, there's always going to be people making fun of us. But let me tell you something. If they're making fun of you now and you roll up in a Bentley, I've got a Bentley, I've got a Mercedes, I have the big house. I have a, no one really makes fun of me anymore. You know what I mean? It's weird the way that works. So I'm just telling you that this is a, well, and, and I'll leave you with this thought. So think of being an artist for a moment and 2024 is a blind canvas, right? You can do whatever you want to do with this canvas. So what would be sad is because I just got back from the Louvre. If you've never been to Paris, go, okay? And go to the Louvre and get a guided one-on-one -on -one tour. Don't just walk through there and get the headset. It's, I've done it that way. This one-on-one -on -one tour was so phenomenal. And and to think, like guys like Michael Angelo, and, and, and I'm not gonna get into it right now, but he was so much better than everybody else in his time. It's not even close. When you find out the detail and the technique and, and what he did and how amazing it was, it's wild. But Michael, just to give you this, Michael Angelo, when he did the Mona Lisa, this is weird. He never, according to Michelangelo, he never finished a painting. He would paint approximately 30 different layers to 50 different layers because it wasn't perfect. It was always evolving and getting better. Like, again, it's mindset. It's so different than everything else you're thinking about. What I'm saying is Michelangelo kept going and going and refining, getting better. Now, compared to that, you've got your canvas and Instead of creating a masterpiece, what if you just scribble on it? I've got children in the house. They sometimes, they do their artwork and you look at it and go, you didn't really put hardly any energy into it. Almost like you put no energy into it. That could be your painting for this year. Or you could be like a lot of people. And when at the end of the year comes, we take the blank canvas you started with in January. And in December, you have the same blank canvas because we're afraid to make a mistake. What if I do the wrong thing? And look, the people, M Michelangelo made mistakes all the time. He corrected his mistake. That's all. It's like you're going to have problems. You're going to screw up. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get disappointed. The number one key is daily action, daily discipline, getting and doing the business every day. I just got back from the gym. I've been to the gym five days in a row. I normally go to the gym all the time. I took a bit of a break. I'm back in my deal. Here's the thing. I'm not an Olympic athlete. I'm not going to lift weights like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Here's one thing I guarantee you. I'm going to get my ass to the gym every damn day. There will be no day other than the day like in, in that con when we're doing the event that I'm not going to be at a gym. Other than that, I'll be in a gym every day. I'm I'm not that strong. I'm not that anything. But you know what I am? I'm dedicated. I'm focused. And I have got great discipline. So if this is going to be a great year for you, you know what you need to do. Get out and do the calls. Don't wait for Alex or one of your managers to call you up and be on you and give you a hard time. Do it because if you do it, if you make the numbers your friend, it's going to work. It's just going to work. I'll tell you this. The universe is fair. The universe is neutral. If you do enough presentation, you're going to make sales. Maybe you won't make 10, 12 in a row. Maybe you're going to go through a dry spell. But if you keep getting better and keep doing what you're supposed to, I'm just telling you, it'll all come out in the end. The work will all come out in the end. So you have an incredible opportunity, guys. Let me tell you, I appreciate, I'm going to wind up. You gave me a few minutes of your time. Your time is so valuable and I never take that light. So thank you for time. This January, when we're in Dallas, I'm just telling you, you can't miss it. Andy Albright is a to me, a genius. And, and to me, like one of the most remarkable business people I've ever met. And I've been across the table from Mark Cuban. I've been across the table from George Zimmer, who started the men's warehouse. I've been around some pretty damn phenomenal, successful people. And I put Andy up at the top of the list with those people. And I'm just telling you, I've never seen him this laser focused. He knows exactly
exactly what everyone needs to have this year be the biggest year of your life. I'm certainly locked and loaded with what I'm gonna present. All the trainers, including our own Alex, we're all gonna give you exactly what you need. And remember, we don't know what we don't know. So it doesn't matter what you think you need. What matters is we give you what you need, whether you know that you need it or not. So it, it, I'm telling you, there is gonna be a huge explosion of sales in February and March, leading into the second event of the year. Year, the view in April. And for those people who went to the view last year, this event is unlike anything anyone does anywhere in the world. By May and June, our sales are going to be through the friggin' roof. Don't not be at NatCon and do your best to not be there by yourself because your goal is to have 10 or 20, 20 or 30 people with you at the view in April. But that's not going to happen if you're by yourself at NatCon or certainly if you don't go to NatCon. So again, I know it costs money. I know it's a week. Weekend. I know you may have to get a babysitter. I know it may be a pain in the ass, but again, getting rid, if it was easy, we would pay people minimum wage. It's not easy. It's hard. That's why we get to live the lifestyle that we live. If everyone had a Lamborghini, having a Lamborghini wouldn't be cool. If everyone lived in a beautiful gated community, being in a gated community wouldn't be that cool. So the top 1%, the rich are getting richer. They are. The rich are getting richer. Have you seen that in the last two years? More than any time in our lifetime, the rich getting richer you know what is the king now more than ever cash cash is king money is king investments are bountiful right now incredible returns on investments you know what everyone needs so what if we go out this year and we make way more money than we need to pay our bills and we walk into 2025 with a mountain of cash that we can create generational wealth from a couple of good investments because the world is in a situation where that's what it's all about so again i could go on for another four 14 minutes, hours, days, whatever. I'll turn it back over to Alex. I appreciate you listening to a little bit of what I'm saying. This is your year. Grab it. Go with it. Don't let it be another normal year. It's time to be abnormal. I think I'll sign off with that. So have a great evening. God bless. And I look forward to seeing you guys in Dallas. Wow. Thanks, Mark. That was incredible. I'm just taking like mad notes and you're always tweaking me. And it's really funny. Everyone thinks, oh, Alex has Mark on here to help all of you. No, I have Mark on here to help me. Okay. Okay. You guys just happen to be listening to the conversation that Mark's speaking to me about. But wow, I'm jacked up. So look, gang, you got to be a NatCon. I mean, come on. All the committed people will be there. There's no one that's ever made any significant money that's that never went to conferences. Anyone who's made significant money, six figures and above, have always gone to events. Yeah. Right? So which one are you going to be? Are you going to try to defy the odds? Right, Mark? Do you want to try to be that exception or do you want to go with the odds, right? Yeah, I said this the other day, Alex, but I'll say it again. And I don't say this lightly. This is an analogy. I know a lot of people who've been in the military and I have the deepest respect. So one of the nastiest things you can come across in the military is a mine. And what a mine can do if you step on it, blow you up, rip a limb off, it's devastating. And if you were to come up on a minefield and you were being chased from behind, so you had to go forward. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd be scared to death. I, I would be paralyzed with fear. But if someone came up to you and said, hey, I've been through the minefield 20 times. As a matter of fact, I'm now getting paid to take people through the minefield so that you're safe. I know exactly where to step and where not to step. Would you not pay that guy $300 or $400 to help you get through the minefield? Because I would. You know what I mean? So being an entrepreneur is hard. Being successful in, in any organization like this is hard. So Alex, myself, and the Albright, Alex, we have been to the minefield. We know where to step and where not to step. So a lot of what we're going to teach you how to do in Dallas is what to do. But to me, the most valuable thing I got from my mentor 35 years ago is what not to do, where not to step. Because a lot of people, if they don't get guidance and mentorship, they step on a, a business minefield and that's it. It's the end of their career. Yeah. So I, I hope if nothing else, you definitely make a decision to get to Dallas. I, I assure you, if you do, you'll be coming to events for quite some time because they really are unique.
unique and different and essential to our success. Absolutely. Gang, you heard it here from the esteemed Mark Aceta, whom I'm proud to call friend and um, just humbled that he was willing to take time away from his family and uh, to be with us. And so, Mark, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, dude. And can't wait to see you when we get to hang out. And I will, of course, be calling you to help me tweak my three talks. I can't believe I have three talks at that con. I love it. I love it. Dude, you're the master, so I am at your feet learning. So, gang, you got the best from the best. And, man, I can't be more excited. So, you heard what you need to hear. I hope this business is built on belief. And you can't get belief sitting in your basement, eating Doritos, surfing face. You get belief by stepping out on faith and coming out to get around the believers. And this builds, and you will get the belief you need to make 2024 your best year, living your best life, achieving the best things you've ever achieved in your life. Thanks, gang, for being on here. I'm going to make this video available for you to rewatch and take more notes, man. God bless you. Thanks, Mark, for everything. God bless everybody. Right. See you in Dallas, guys. Thank you for your time.